We're going to have a Wahoo program today. We have Joan Hunter with us, and she is outdoing her parents, and we love her. And, and she wrote a book, Annihilate. Now, that's usually used in wars and things like that. So we'll have to find out what that's about. Fear. <laughs> and Mr. Tim Gidley's with us. Yes. And we seldom have him, but now that he's moved to Tampa, he's going to come by more. And he's going to start the program with Sacrifice of Praise. cry of praise begins with thee you've given the gift of life and hid in our hearts eternity revealed in the mercies of Christ though darkness surrounds us in shadows of death we look to your heavenly rays the fruit of our lips giving thanks with each breath we offer to thee our praise for your generous favors, O oh God, for the gift of our freedom in Christ. As an offering of praise unto you, we will give our lives in sacrifice. Amen. Our fountain of praise begins with thee. It flows from your throne above. Mercy like rain comes cleansing and free, showering your children in love. The thirst of our souls left parched by sin is quenched by your river of grace. As rains that ascend to the heavens again, we offer to thee our praise. For your generous favors, O oh God, for the gift of our freedom in Christ. As an offering of praise unto you, we will give our lives in sacrifice. there in your home and just worship the Lord today. It's a magnificent day to worship our Lord. Hallelujah. The fire of our praise begins with thee. And each fiber within us always yearning to be. Then be consumed in fire for these set a blaze with the fragrance of sacrifice, sweet as perfume. We offer to thee our praise, oh, our praise for your generous favors, oh God, and the gift of our freedom in Christ. As an offering of praise unto you, oh, we For your generous favors, O oh God, and the gift of our freedom in Christ, as an offering of praise unto you, Lord, we'll give our lives. We will give our lives. We will give our lives. The sacrifice. He 
Each cry of praise begins with Thee. Hallelujah. We offer now the sacrifice of praise. Wow. Thank you for singing that song on St. Patrick's Day. Yes. You know, St. Patrick was a great man of God, and I didn't know that for many, many, many years. In fact, I probably found that out about five years ago. He led many to Christ in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Met, led many to Christ and got rid of all the snakes. Oh, and did there's he? no snakes on the entire island of Ireland even to this day. Isn't that great? Really? Yeah. I uh, just recently, I mean, I've known a lot about St. Patrick, and recently this guy went into great detail of what he did and how he was killed at a young age and different things like that. But what he accomplished, and they realized they did it by mistake, which is unfortunate. But the point is, is that he was out there and he was doing everything he could do. He was on the front lines uh, where the gospel was concerned, and everybody thought he was like weird and crazy. You know, but he had the power of God and brought about great revival uh, in Ireland. And that was before it separated into two different countries. Wow. wow. Well, that is good because he was coming up against the Druids. Right. And their demonic power. Right. But I read and he uh, won. a really neat book, too, that talked about all his miracles. Wow. Yes. He had tons of miracles. And <clears throat> most people don't know about it. They just think it's, it's you know, it's a day to wear green. Yeah, yeah, and, and party. Know, and party, <laughs> yes. Talk about the leprechauns. Yes. Well, annihilate. Annihilate fear. Fear. Yes, get rid of fear. Okay. Yes. Well, I like the other part of that. Peace and power for every area of your life. Yes. And in this, over the last, say, the last 12 months, 15 months, there has been such an all-out attack I don't want to say primarily on the world, but, but primarily on the body of Christ. And right now, yes. people are dealing with so much fear, it's consuming them. And then fear, what it does is it gets your body out of alignment, alkaline and acid, brings on acid reflux, makes it hard to sleep, uh, you know, ulcers, different things like that, IBS, Crohn's disease, um, even heart attacks and strokes and death uh, because of the fear of what's going to happen. Well, what you fear the most comes upon you. So don't fear, don't fear of getting cancer. Don't fear of getting this sickness or that. We have got to annihilate fear, you know, and it's like what you said earlier about, it sounds like a war or a battle. Right. And it yeah, is, is yeah. to literally to totally completely annihilate it. Not just, well, let's get rid of some fear. No, man, I wanted a strong title. And I named it, and I, I semi-designed the cover of it. And, uh, you know, and I said, this is kind of what I want. And then they took it and enhanced it. I'm like, I want fear to be crossed out of every person's life. Amen. And uh, this past, um, well, in this last year, uh, it's been a very interesting time. And it's like, okay, travel, 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 and then <laughs> no travel. And you've got 14 people that work for you. And you've got this, and you've got the building, which... Praise God, we had everything paid off. Everything was paid off. We had money in the savings account, but we still didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And then with no travels and different things like that, it can be pretty traumatic, you know, on the finances. And God met our every need. It was so exciting. But what happened in the year 2000, me losing everything, losing the church, losing, you know, the marriage, losing, 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 lost everything, and, and no, not enough income to survive what it did, it prepared me for 2020, you know, yeah. tw I mean, 2020. Yes. And, uh, and so during that time, I'm like, you know, if you can get me through what I went through in the year 2000, diagnosed with breast cancer, in addition to everything else, losing everything else, then I'm like, this, this year's going to be a breeze because I don't have cancer and I'm healthy, you know? And, yeah. uh, and so just went through this and it was, uh, it was amazing how God literally just made up the difference uh, we didn't even have to touch our savings account. We were Praise able to do a, a remodel on the inside of lighting, special lighting for when we did start having services again, which we have, that it's going to be just state-of-the-art lights, camera action for recording, for streaming, for television, for everything. It's just, it was just amazing. 
Where is Where this is building? Going? In Tomball, Texas, just outside of Houston, which is wow. where our headquarters is at. Really? Well, <laughs> well, we want to find out about peace and power. Where do you get peace? Well, obviously, you get it from the Lord. And uh, somebody asked me this question this past week about what did you do uh, when you were going through the fear, when you had this, when you had that, and different things in the year 2000. What did, what did I learn during that time that gave me perfect peace this time? Because I had no worries. I have no fears. I'm like, you know, I'm like, you know, uh, you're not dependent, God. You're not dependent on me supplying the needs of this ministry by me traveling. That's your job. Okay, I get to travel, but I don't have to travel for survival. And I said, this is your time to prove to, that to me. You know, because you can talk to God like that, okay? Well, yeah. But in, once again, the year 2000, dealing with the breast cancer, knowing that I had to do what I could do to go after God in a greater way because he was the only one that could heal me. He's the only one that could heal my broken heart, which we've shared on the programs before. He healed my broken heart, broken heart syndrome, um, devastation, supernaturally healed <clears throat> my... Uh, the breast cancer, I mean, everything. He healed me in every area of my life. I've got free of worry and, and unforgiveness, betrayal, abandonment, worry. And I know I said that more than once, but that's a, the main guy in there. And, and the fear, what was going to happen to me? How, how was I going to support my girls? How was, you know, you know, all the stuff that you go through as a single mom and you're like, Whoa, and three of them are in college. I'm like, oh, Jesus, this is way more than I could handle. And he said he'd never give us anything too much for us to handle. I, I was close <laughs> at that point, um, but I didn't have any money for groceries. And I would get home from work and it looked like, I'm like, the girls have trashed the house out. They didn't normally trash the house out. And it was just like so trashed out. And as I walked into toward the kitchen, I realized it was bags and bags and bags of groceries that couldn't fit in my refrigerator or my pantry. And they wow. were all over the kitchen table, the island, uh, into the living room, into the hallway, going to the kitchen. And that, and, and you know, and I thought it was so neat because if you ever pack, give somebody something, they gave a toilet paper, they gave a shampoo. You go through a lot of that when you got girls, in addition to the food. And I'm like, God, you did it again. You did it again. And like, I would go and I would say, I don't have any idea um, how I'm going to make it. You know, and I, I didn't even have enough money to buy ketchup. And, and so I got home and there was a check in the mail for $200. And this guy said, no, this is in the year 2000. He says, I'm gonna go without my food for two weeks to make sure you have your food. That's a friend. Yeah, that really? is a friend. That's a friend. Praise That's yeah. sacrifice. <clears throat> it is, but see what God said, he would take care of my needs according to his riches and glory, not according to mine. And what <clears throat> happens so often is that, you know, it's like, I can't make it. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to, well, what you're doing is you're taking on the responsibility of supplying your needs. And God says that he will have no other gods before him. I believe that the year two, 2020 was a year of pruning and proving. Pruning off the doubt, pruning off, annihilating the fear and getting rid of that. <clears throat> And then in turn, going and doing what you're called to do and to believe God more than ever, because it's like, OK, don't have a job, <laughs> you know, and unemployment only goes so far if you can get unemployment. And, and you're like, OK, God, this is not enough. And you can, you know, you can get mad at God for losing your job, but God didn't do it. That's right. And so what God wants, he says, he says, if you take the, or as you take the light in me, I'll give you the desires of your heart, which is way more than just meeting our needs. And uh, last April uh, in, in 2020, I was scrolling through some things and, you know, and I'd moved into a house that's uh, a, a year before then. And, and I found the perfect bookcases. This may seem very carnal, but let me tell you, it can preach. And I'm like, I have an interior decorating background. I used to have an interior decorating company. And I'm like, these would finish off my large living room, okay? And I'm like, now's just not the time to get them. 
because here we have April, we don't know what's going to happen, had plenty of money in the savings account, you know, Dave Ramsey, six months in, in the savings account, I've got that, you know, and just in the event that I needed to have it, which praise God, I didn't have to touch it, I just kept adding to it miraculously, it was wow. so awesome what God did, and, um, and so I'm like, okay, wisdom says, don't buy it, at least not now, tag this, Maybe get it later when everything's back, the economy is rolling again. Die to self, die to self, die to flesh. You know, I kept doing that, die to flesh. And, uh, you know, because I know it would just really augment the room and finish it out and complete it. You understand yeah. probably what I'm talking about, okay? I do. And, uh, and so uh, about a week later, I got a text message. God showed me that you're believing him for something. Now you're $600 a piece worth every penny. And God's t laid it on this man's heart. He's a spiritual son. He says, you've wanting something uh, it, that's for you personally, but you've opted not to spend the money. I'm putting $1,100 in your account. I don't know what you're wanting, but I'm going to put it in your account to get it. And I went, thank you, Jesus. So I got it back Christ up and God. I ordered it. In that two-week period, they were half price. Really? They went down to $300 a piece instead of 600 and they come in pieces. So I, I had enough to tithe off of, very important. The $1,100, I got to tithe off of it. I got to order those things and I had plenty of money left over to have my daughter and son-in-law and grandkids over for dinner. And he made, he put one together before dinner and one together after dinner. So it worked out really good. And let wow. me tell you, they make the room. It's amazing. I bet they do. They <laughs> do. It is so amazing how God did that. And see, as you take the light in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart, yes. even these amazing geometric, you know, Absolutely. bookcases and everything. And the same God that did it for her will do it for you. Yes. Because he says he is no respecter of persons. Yes. I want you to talk. You said fear and trust cannot exist together. And you told the story of your mom and dad on an airplane. There was big time turbulence and fear gripped them because honestly, everything that wasn't tied down went up to the ceiling mm -hmm. and the people thought they might die. They really did. Mm -hmm. So what'd your mom and dad start doing? At first they were afraid. Yes, I mean, you can't help but, you know, all <clears throat> yeah. of a sudden you're, you know, because I've had the same situation happen where it lost 10,000 feet in a matter of seconds. Yeah and they tell you to put your trays, this is when they serve you food, but they put your, their trays in the seat back pocket in front. That's how serious it was. And, uh, and, and this is, it's kind of cute what we did on a flight. And I was like, okay, we started praying and we didn't care who was on that plane. <laughs> and you know, and there was my traveling companion, and we we're like, in the name of Jesus, you know, you know, and it was, and then we just stopped to kind of take a breather, maybe take a drink of water or something. And they turned around and go, don't stop, don't stop. They kept telling us to don't stop wow. because th it brought peace on the plane. Yeah. And, and, it, and it landed safely and stuff like that. To get on another plane was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, because we had, a, that was a connecting flight, uh, but it was in the winter time and different things. And it was, it was pretty interesting. But the point is, is that we just pray. And then you say, you know, God, I have not walked out my destiny. It's not my time. I thank you, Father, for protecting me on this flight. Mm -hmm. And you start declaring and decreeing. Yeah. I've had, I think, three people uh, I kind of a weird, you know, row, um, you know, sling of people here of like over the last like couple of years that have died, three that have died on the plane. And, uh, you know, and that makes life exciting. So one, we have to do an emergency landing, uh, you know, and the other one just said they've got EMTs there, you know, they're, they're on the thing. And I'm, I get up and I get in the aisle. And you have not walked out your destiny. I command that spirit of death to come off of you in Jesus name. <laughs> and they take a deep breath and the flight attendants have no idea what just happened to that person. And really the person doesn't either because it wasn't screaming, yelling, yeah. you know, curse that spirit of death. And they got up and they were able to walk off the plane, but they're legally, they can't. So they brought the EMTs on, they put them on the gurney and he's sitting up talking to everybody. I don't know what all the excitement is. You know, it was wow. pretty funny because he, he got to land laying on the floor in first class. We get upgraded to first class quite a bit. And, uh, you know, so it was just, it was pretty funny, you know, and just to see that. And we, we have um, power, we, just like there's a thermostat in here that can set the temperature. We can go into our workplace, we can go into church, we can go in 
to wherever we are, we can set the atmosphere and like a thermometer and, you know, rheostat kind of a thing and do that and set the atmosphere. And, and it's very important That's good. And, and we can make it go also, you know, with yeah. fear and et cetera. And your words. And your words, yeah. And agreeing with the enemy. Absolutely. And, and the enemy this year really wants us to agree with him that we're going to lose our house, we're going to lose yeah. our jobs, you know, the, it's going to shut the ministry down, it's going to blah, 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 blah. Then we're going to have, I mean, because our agency that we run our payroll through, they said 40% of the people in, that have the, your, your level of business will not make it through this time. Mm. That's a lot. Okay. 40%. Now there's about 40% of churches that are not making it through right. because they can't, couldn't keep up the mortgage. Okay. Mortgage, the root word is death grip. Okay. And they, and so it's so important that we get out of debt and, and because you think, well, oh, that'll never happen. Okay. Just like what Jane just said, change your words. Father, I thank you for supernaturally paying off my house, paying off my church building, paying off my car, because we have, my husband and I have no debt. We'll, and, and the ministry, except for a little bit on our house, but we're believing that our house will be paid off this year, which in itself is a true miracle. But the point is, is that what God wants to do is he wants to turn our fear into faith, relying on us and relying on him. And the more that we rely on ourselves, the more fear that's going to come in. Our mouth must come into alignment, must come into alignment that, you know, I live by, I walk by faith. I don't walk by fear that I, I'm going to annihilate any kind of fear in my life. If it comes in, say, excuse me, fear, you are trespassing on God's property. You cannot come in in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Tim, Glory to God. God. Tim Giggly's got his thing. That again. is so awesome. He's amazing. <laughs> yes, he, he is. <laughs> and right after this break, Tim's going to come back and bless us again. next text could save a life. Help CTN bring hope to the hurting, feed the hungry, and reach the lost. You can make a difference today. Text CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. That's CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. Joins in praise, our Lord. 
Word is lifted up. Every nation stand and praise Him. Praise Him. The Lord is high and lifted up. Our Lord is lifted up. Lifted up above creation reigns His excellence, it's evident His works declare His worth God's works declare His worth The Lord is lifted up joins in praise. The Lord is lifted up. Every nation must stand and praise Him. Praise Him. The Lord is high and lifted up. Our Hallelujah. He's got a voice. He does. And Glory he, to God. He, he used to be a bus driver for Donnie Rambo. Rambo, yes. <laughs> I heard that story and it's like he yeah. had a hidden secret in his yeah. in his vocal cords there. And he never told anybody. <laughs> yeah, he never told them, I think, too. So somebody that knew him. Well, they didn't need a singer. They needed story a bus right driver. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I want to play. I want to play something for you. I want to play this guy singing. And they were amazed and said, who is that? Mm -hmm. That's your bus driver. So, Tim, if I've got this right, they surprised you <clears throat> and brought you on to sing. You didn't know it. They brought you on to sing one night. And I guess the rest is history. Yep. Praise, Praise God. God. Well, you said these words. Don't ever say the words in your book. You said it. Don't ever say, I'm afraid. Why right. did you say that in your book? Well, power of your words. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you have a, a, all power and authority has been given to you by Christ when he died, okay, for all the, the years after his death, okay? And so we have all power and authority. And so what that means is all power and authority, we can bless or we can curse. Oh, I'm so afraid. And what that does is it opens the door for the spirit of fear to come on you. And it's like, uh, nope, you know, it's like right here, because fear will come knocking at your door. Send Jesus to answer the doors, you know, the saying, okay? And, uh, and don't allow fear to come in our lives. It's so easy because, you know, you watch CNN, you know, constant negative news, oh. different television programs. I wanted to talk about that. Let's just really talk about people that continually watch the news. Okay. Because it just instills fear. Like we don't watch the news. I don't either. <clears throat> we don't watch and, it. And I, it's... you know, and the only time I watch the news is at the airport, which right now, praise God, is getting to be a little bit more frequent than normal than it has been. But I have a friend. He has three different televisions on, really loud because he's hard of hearing. I know his wife really well, and they're on three different news channels. Mm. And I haven't been able to see her in almost a year, except at the doorstep. I can wave at her at the doorstep because of fear. Really? Yeah. And we know people that they don't go anywhere. Right. They don't go anywhere. They don't leave the house they except have to go dog, to the doctor. They have their groceries delivered mm -hmm. and they are really in fear. They're in prison. They are in prison. They're in prison and imprisoned by fear. And, and what the world has done in, in the news, okay, has, has painted a picture that nobody can survive. Okay, which is really sad, which is not Bible. 
And I and know it's that just not true it's not true either, of course, you know. But the point is, we can listen to this and listen to that, and everybody is sick, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm only around sick people, you know, except for here. We don't have any sick people here because um, one got healed, praise God, in the name of Jesus. But what happened is I'm only around sick people. I'm always in miracle services, sick people, and things like that. Well, as a result of that, my immune system is very strong. Do I have fear of getting any of those diseases? Absolutely not. And I don't get sick. And I had a doctor tell, tell me recently, that's impossible. You can't have to get sick. Sick At 67, almost 68 years old, you have to get sick sometime. No, I don't. Well, then well, you're see, not you telling. Well, see, you confess it too. You can have, Jesus said, you can right. have what you say. That man will have what he says. That's right. What do you say all life the time? Life and death, life I and death. I speak sick. life over to my body and I command my hormones to go in perfect harmony and balance, which is in the natural impossible. And I, and I pray certain prayers every day to make sure that my immune system is strong. You know, and, and you know, I mean, I'm using hand sanitizer and washing my hands forever, not for two years, forever. <laughs> You know, when I minister around the world and in, in miracle services, I always have hand sanitizer. So none, none of this is new. You know, when you get done praying for the sick, you go and you wash your hands. If somebody is sweating and very sick, you know, do the hand sanitizer between pray, before I pray for the next one. Okay, that's wisdom. Okay, yeah. and so what happens is we can walk in so much fear that I can't go and pray for anybody. I can't go over here. Yeah. I couldn't fly anywhere. You know, fairly recently, earlier this year, I went to Uganda, Africa. You know, and it's like, okay, thank you, Jesus. You know, because you're gonna be around all kinds of sickness and disease there. You know, you had to have a COVID test, negative COVID test before you came in, before you came back. So that was fun, but we all, we all made it with no problem. And not one of us got sick. And I will tell you this, you, you've had me on for my book, Supernatural <clears throat> Provision. And Supernatural Provision talks about scriptural giving. So before, like about, a, a, you know, last year, about March, I gave $91.19 based on Psalm 91, COVID-19. And I have not had, a, I have not had one symptom, nothing. I have been exposed to it. I mean, you go to the grocery store, you're exposed to it, you know. And they asked you, when, before you get on a plane, have you been exposed? I said, well, I, I went to this other store the other day, the grocery store. So, yes, I have been exposed to it. And, I mean, because everybody has. And, and so, but what's coming out of your mouth? Well, I can't go, I can't go, because if I do, I'll get this, you know, and then, and then, you know. But the thing is, washing your hands isn't new. You know, wisdom isn't new. Um, hand sanitizer isn't new. It's been around forever. Yeah. And, you know, and so... Uh, and so, but what I, I, I was like, I'm like, I don't get sick. And I'm like rebuking the doctor, but quietly, you know, and rebuking what the doctor was saying, because I don't want to go, well, maybe it is impossible. I yeah. haven't been sick at, in 20 years since I got nice healed of, of breast cancer. And, and I mean, I've had like a little problem with my knee. I burned out my adrenal glands. I asked my daughter, who's now a doctor, uh, I said, what is that? She says, you probably blew out your adrenal glands. I took my thumbs like this, put on top of my kidneys where the adrenals were. And I got new, two new adrenal glands. You know, that's from just going and going and going. So, you know, the word says you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It doesn't say except yourself. Yeah. I want to say this. This book is full of the word of God. You have seven pages front and back of nothing but scripture. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, I counted, 11 pages of prayers because there are different kinds of fear. Fear, fear lack, manifests fear in different ways. There are yep. panic attacks. So you didn't even know what was in your book, but she does. She knows my book better than I do, I think. I know your books. <laughs> You're so, it's, I but love it. But every single chapter mm -hmm. is loaded. I told Bob there's only one other time I can think of that I saw so much scripture in a book. But there's a reason for that. It's a promise of God. It is the of word God. of God. People need to yes. know there's, it's active and alive. Mm -hmm. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And you know, I, I felt like fear. I blew it there uh, <laughs> yeah. trying to explain to people about sinus problems and all that, that I really didn't stick with just decreeing the word, just decreeing the word. 
but um, there was a couple of, I don't know, a couple of weeks back that I was just determined. But I'll tell you, when I read this book, it was like, that does it. That's it. And I know that I know I'm going to be healed. Mm -hmm. I don't know the day and the hour, the manifestation. Well, you're and, getting uh, better all the time. But I decree that, too. <laughs> yes. Every day I get better. Mm -hmm. I'm just decreeing it now. Every day I get better. Yes. I speak to my body. Because, you know, we've all seen miracles in this room. Everybody in this room has seen miracles. But I spoke to a couple of things that came up in my head. One I had to speak to for three solid months. I spoke to it like it was a person. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, after about a month, I said, what are you still doing there? I told you you were defeated. Jesus took you. Anyway, it left. And then it took three weeks for another one to go, mm -hmm. but they both left. Because but because of your determination work. and not accepting it, that's, that's what the turnaround was. So you don't accept it. Mm -hmm. Because so, the enemy will do whatever he can do. Yes, using fear. Yes, using friends. Um, you know, because see, the friends will go, oh, I'm so sorry for you. Yeah. And I'm going to pray for you because you have this problem. No, man, let's stand in agreement. Let's pray against it. Yeah. Okay. And so we need to come into agreement that no more thus far and no more yeah. in Jesus name. Tell people what they say when the doctor says you have this. Standing in, in faith mm -hmm. and not giving in to saying words you don't need to say. What do they tell their friends when they say, what does the doctor say? Well, it's an interesting time. Year 2000, diagnosed with breast cancer, and I'm laying there, uh, sonogram and the whole bit, and I'm laying there, and I'm like, okay, I've got to start planning my funeral. You know, cancer zone is the big C. Christ is the big C, not cancer. And, and Christ came to annihilate cancer, praise God. So I'm laying there, and I'm like, what am I thinking? Some Christians need to slap themselves in the face. Yeah. You know, and I started slapping myself, saying, no, I'm going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Today I Amen. choose life. And so I walked out of there and I said, I cut those words off in Jesus' name. And, uh, you know, in another situation that happened is I went, I don't know, this is over 10, 12 years ago. I went and had my eyes examined. They said, we well, have macular degeneration and you have this and, you know, and you'll be blind within five years. I did not rebuke the doctor because that's not good. Yeah. So what I did is I walked out and said, I cut those words off in the name of Jesus. I speak macular regeneration that's good. in Jesus' name. So I went back, had an, an actual eye exam five years later, uh, and they said, it shows on our chart you have macular regeneration, but we don't see any. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Power the word. Right. And so what happened is they, what you asked me what I tell my friends. Well, the doctor says, I have macular generation, but I cut those words off and I'm speaking macular regeneration. It <clears throat> cannot regenerate. Amen. That's good. It's a miracle. That's good. I, you know, I want you to tell a story that's hard to believe, but you witnessed it in Uganda about money appearing. Okay. I'm like, which one? I just told you a whole <laughs> bunch of stories. You know, like we had so many people that were paralyzed, got up and walked and, and blind eyes open, ears open. But he wants me to talk about the finances, which is like so awesome. The church received their offering. And, uh, and then I got up there to speak. And as I'm speaking, um, I said, some of you out there want to give an offering, but you just don't have it. I said, the word says he gives seed to the sower. And as he gives seed to the sower, I want you to bring it up here. And I had an extra basket brought up to the front. And I want you to check your pockets, check your purse, check your whatever, wherever you keep money. And because they keep it in interesting places down there. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, check again. And I said, whatever God gives you, I want you to give because he's given you seed to sow. Out of 400, roughly three, 400 people, 100 people ran up with supernatural manifested money. It was amazing. Wow. Uh, one of the pastors got a, a brand new Toyota given to them. Another pastor got 20 acres to build on. Um, uh, my translator got 20 acres to build on plus, and they're gonna, somebody's gonna, gave him the property, gave him the, is gonna build a house for him on separate property, gonna build a church for him. And he writes, he goes, and it's a Ugandan, not an American. 
the pastor at that church, he, uh, he was getting some remodeling done. He didn't have quite enough money to pay for it. And the guy says, okay, I'm done. He finished early because he was kind of budgeting like next week. And so he goes home. He opens up his, his nightstand and there's twice as much money as he needed in there to pay. And he didn't know where it came from. Praise God. So my God's going to supply all my needs. Yes. But that is just some of the miracles that happen. You know, one guy got, did, hadn't had a job in a year, contractor. He got a job that was so big he had to hire five church members. Really? Isn't that great? Yes. So, yeah. I mean, every time you turn around, <clears throat> miracles were happening. And I'm still getting emails from them saying, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. And it's absolutely phenomenal what God did. Praise God. And they got revelation that God's going to meet their needs just like he meets them here in America. Amen. Wow. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, I'd like to, for you to talk about open doors that let fear in. Because mm -hmm. I know horror movies are just one of them. Horror movies is a big so. one. <laughs> <laughs> right after Tim Gidley sings. He's going to sing, yes. and I'm so excited to get to hear him again. Yeah. Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. of men and of angels but have not love I am only a resounding gong a clanging cymbal and if I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge and if i have a faith that can move the mountains but have not a love i am nothing if i give all i possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but I have not love I gain Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, does not boast, it is not proud, it is not a rude, it is not self-seeking, it is 
is not easily angered. It takes no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. And where there are tongues, they will be still. And where there is knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, imperfection disappears. For when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child, but when I became put my childish ways behind me. And now I see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. But then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, but then, then I will know fully, even as I am fully known. And now it is three remain, faith, hope, and love, for the greatest of these is a Awestruck. I know. It's yeah. like you, know, you want to clap. You want to just like know. You want to pray. Just you want to praise. <laughs> you know, just the presence of God. Because yeah. see, what we're talking about here is annihilating fear. Okay, and we've got to annihilate fear. Love will annihilate fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Okay, and that's what he was talking about in that yeah. song. Is is the love, yes. and you know, and. Fear, we talked about different things that we want, you know, to talk a little bit more about opening the door. Horror movies can open the door, you know, um, and just some of the different songs can open it up. Um, the other day, my grandson was singing, um, oh, I'm so depressed, I don't want to get out of bed. And I'm just like, <laughs> and, and I'm like, and it was a song on the radio. You know, that you hear like at the at the malls and stuff like that. And, and he's saying, I'm like, Okay, we are so turning the channel, you know, and it was a singing a song, and that opens up the door for yes. depression and fear, even as a as a six year old child, and I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, we don't even know what's really on some of the words on the thing, um, that can do that, that listening to the news, uh, hanging around with friends who are always negative, yes. always fearful. Okay, and it's like, you know, you hang out with people that you want to be like, that's why I keep coming back yeah. here, because yeah. I love you guys. Uh, that's why and, we want you to come back, we want to, yeah. Yes, okay, but in addition to that, and I, I meant to say this earlier, there's a real attack on finances, okay, and in the, around the world, but as God started manifesting money, it was absolutely amazing what God was doing. And then as God manifested money, they gave. They gave. And I want to really encourage you to give into this network because I know for, I think it's what, 50 years now, something like 40 some years? 42. 42 years. 
42 years going strong. I've been on here many, many times. My mom and dad have been on here many, many times. And it's going strong, going strong, going strong. Thank you, Jesus. But it can only stay strong with your help. And, and I want to encourage you uh, because I come here and I want to sow <clears throat> into this network and, and just bless the network. And, and I get blessed because I come. So that's, and God multiplies all of that and supplies all the need, which is awesome. But too many times things can open up the door. Friends can, you know, teachers can, even pastors can, you know, and they can preach fear, though they don't really want you to get afraid, but they can preach and you can hear about it, hear about it, hear about it. And we have got to, what? Annihilate fear. And if the fear comes knocking at the door, fear comes trying to come in, know you are commanded to go. So we're going to pray and we're going to believe God for fear to go. Many people are dealing with fear of dying. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I send the word of healing and revelation through the airwaves right now. We curse and annihilate fear in Jesus' name. Any form of trauma that may have opened up the door and as Jane mentioned earlier about reoccurring and revisiting those traumas, it's time you get rid of it. Ask God to erase those memories, and God will erase those memories supernaturally. So, Father, right now, I just curse any kind of trauma in their heart. And that fear, I just, some of you have, have like a stronghold and, and just really strong hands around your heart, gripping you. I command that to go. Fear of dying, fear of getting sick, fear of getting the flu, fear of getting whatever. We have to annihilate fear. Fill your faith tank up where there is no room for fear. I speak a blessing financially because there's such a fear of lack. And Father, we just thank you for showing yourself strong and in a mighty, mighty way. And Father, I just thank you for miracles happening, whether it's in their body, their mind, their soul, their spirit and finances, health, wholeness, restoration in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Woohoo! Woo yes. And that's what your parents are doing right now. That's right. They're cheering me on <laughs> in heaven. That's right. <laughs> I believe they have a portal that looks down. Yep. Yep. Well, if you don't know Jesus Christ, let me just tell you, he knows you. He knows you very well. In fact, there's a book in heaven that's got your name on it, and you want to fulfill what's on that book. But first things first, Jesus said himself, unless a man is born again, he can't enter the kingdom of heaven. That's what he told a man named Nicodemus. So this is what you do. It's simple. It's a gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. You say, so what do I do? How do I get into heaven? You go through Jesus Christ, Jesus alone. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I admit it. The Bible says, by the way, all have sinned. Say, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And today I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. From this day on, I give you my life and I choose to serve you. Now friend, if you meant that from your very heart, your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God, we love you and God bless you all. Amen. We love you and be sure and watch. For the glory of the Lord, we have been created, living text of written word, mercy demonstrated, we are made a channel where His grace is poured. For 
the glory of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord, willingly we suffer, laid upon this holy of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord, we advance you and I Following Christ's blazing sword, His dominion sighted. All that has been taken, it shall be restored. Witness of salvation for the glory of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord, for the glory of our Lord, yes, for the glory. 